This okay, is. great. Um, good morning. It's good a morning. great pleasure to have you all here. Um, we're about to listen to Saranto Columbus, who I know for in excess of 15 years. And he is not only a great accountant with an awesome staff, as you all well know, but he really cares very much about his clients. So every client to him is important. Uh, so I'm very excited to present Saranto Columbus. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you for coming. I'm going to walk around a little bit. I think this is about the only time I'm going to be in. Yeah, right. So I want to thank everybody for taking the time out, the valuable time out, to come to this seminar. I really appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot to us. Um, I feel like you guys are either in the top 5 or 10% of your business just to either come out here and listen to us, try to improve your business, and you will at the end of the seminar. If you take some of the concepts we tell you, you will be improving your business somewhat, and you'll be going in the uh, in the right direction. So once again, I thank you. Your time is meaningful, and I'm really pri privileged to sit in front of 40 some odd people and uh, talk to you and hopefully educate you. So let's get started. Um, we're talking about financial dashboard. Can you all hear me back there? Is that we're good? Okay, sounds good. Uh, you guys came here today. You probably didn't carpool. You came in a car. You got in, started it, looked at your dashboard, you looked at your uh, speedometer, maybe you looked at your gas gauge, see how much gas you had, you looked at, uh, and you have just different um, different meters in there, the car's overheating, you need oil, mostly all digital. It helps you have got here without using the dashboard. Sure, you, most of you live local, maybe some parts of Pico are not so local, but you can get here without dashboard, maybe not so well. Can you drive your car without a dashboard long term? Not so well, not so well. Same thing with your business. You need, in your business, you need a dashboard to help drive you. Um, you need to know, you need to have metrics, you need to have numbers in front of your goals. So you need to have goals in your business, and then you need to put numbers indicators um, in front of those goals, and then you need to put them in front of you and look at them at, at a regular basis, whether that be quarterly, whether that be monthly, and know where you're going. Are you going off track, on track? Um, I heard a story about the airplane. You know, the, the airplane takes off, lands at its destination. 95% of the time, the airplane is off course. But it knows where it's going. It's off course by yards, hundreds of yards. And it, it corrects its path. It corrects its path. It's going the right way. Same thing with your business dashboard. You're not going to be going in the same direction all the time. But if you're off course, you want to know, you want to know that and you want to get right back on course. Do I see successful businesses without a dashboard? Yes, I do. But you know, any, anything you can do to help yourself to, to further your business, you're much better off doing. And, and the more tools and techniques you can use to improve your business, well, those are the more successful businesses. So there's four categories of financial dash, uh, dashboards. One is uh, financial. That's the one that's nearest and dearest to me, right? We're, we're accountants. We talk about income and expenses. That's what's uh, there's several levels of, of accountancies to just get on a little bit of a, a tangent. So most people go to accountants to comply with the government, right? They want to file their taxes. Uh, they want to pay about the right amount of tax that they have to pay. Mm -hmm. So you go in to an accountant. Hopefully they, they file your taxes correctly. You don't get any notices. And you're done. You comply with the government uh, here. Next level up in accountancy, as, as I see it, is accountants who try to save you, you the company money. So, you know, here to me, my staff, is you guys work hard for your money. You're here at 7, 7.30 in the morning. You know, you, you can be sleeping, you can be doing something else, but you're working on improving your business. You guys work hard for your money. We want to we help keep you more of it. So that's one of our slogans that, you know, you work hard for your money, we'll help you keep more of it. So I, I it's instilled in me, it's instilled in my staff. We're constantly looking to um, save level that we get into is to help the people run their businesses, help them take out their goals, help them get some key performance indicators, especially around the income and expense area, and find out how to get a dashboard together for these people and say, okay, what are your goals? What, what do you want to do? How are we going to get there? How much profit do you want to make? How are we going to get there? <coughs> the, the four other categories, the three other categories of um, financial dashboard of uh, indicators is customers, which focus Satisfaction return 
extension. There's internal, which focuses on quality, response time, new product, and there's learning and growth, much what you're doing here today, and that focuses on your employees. I'm not going to touch upon the other three that much. Uh, I will talk about them. I'll have a little bit of stories going to them, but um, we'll move on with the uh, why you need a successful dashboard. Most of my successful clients know their numbers. They know their numbers better than I know their numbers. So if you want to uh, thrive in business, you should really know your numbers. You should know your cost. You should know what it's going to cost you to run your position cost is going to be. Uh, also, if you have these key performance indicators, it will help you in your decision-making ability. You know, are you going to take on this new client? What's the price for this new client going to be? What's my overhead and how much can I afford to lower my price? So Peter Drucker, I don't know if you guys heard of Peter Drucker. He's a management consultant. Probably uh, got one of the first management consultants. Uh, he had a famous quote, what gets measured gets managed. What gets measured gets done. What's measured gets improved. Um, and you probably heard saying, uh, if you're not improving your business, you're dying. So you definitely want to keep improving your business. You want to go to seminars like this. You want to learn more. You want to try to improve and grow your business. Otherwise, especially in today's age in the information technology, um, you're, if you're not growing and improving, you're Key performance indicators, uh, a, good key, a key performance indicator, sometimes called KPI, it needs to be well defined, made, needs to be critical to achieving your goals, applicable to your line of business, and it has to be communicated to key members of your staff. So it's not only that you need to know it, your staff needs to know it. Your employees have to be on the same page as you if you have employees. So you want to put together your key performance indicators you want your employees to, to know what they are. You want them to help you achieve these if you have employees. Um, Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller, um, he used to have quarterly key performance indicators, and if these key performance indicators were met, uh, the staff would have a bonus, and they'd share this bonus, and it worked quite effectively. From all the reading that I did, um, when he started implementing the key performance indicators, sharing with the staff, the uh, productivity grew. So it, there are some generic key performance indicators, which are generic basis, net income, gross profit, things, things of that nature. There are industry-specific like benchmarks, like your gross profit. Um, you have a gross profit, and it, where is it within the industry? Gross profit could be as high as 80%, as low as 20%. So you want to benchmark it to uh, where you are in your industry. It's not a cookie-cutter approach. It has to be customized especially when you get down to the owner level. So you have some generic key performance indicators, you have some industry-specific key performance indicators where you can benchmark, and then you have the, custom, the more customizable ones which are based on the owner. So the business exists to serve the owner, right? We, we, we want to serve the client, the customer, the client, what have you, but ultimately the owner has goals and visions for his life and his business, and that's where you want to get a little bit more specific and down to the details of your um, key performance indicators. And I'll, I'll share a few of my key performance indicators in a few minutes at the end of this session. So some of the uh, examples of financial key performance indicators, the biggest one is net income. What is my net income? How does that compare to my peers? You know, uh, Roughly, you want your net income to be 20 to 35% of your sales. So if you're below 20% of your sales, you want to start looking in detail in numbers and say, hey, what's going on here? How come, you know, I, I struggled with this business. I, uh, maybe I brought it out. At least 20% of my sales and my net income and my bottom line. If you're above 35%, you're doing well. So 20 to 35% of net income is your generic uh, goal, and most businesses fall in, in that category or thrive to fall in that category. There's gross margin. I know Steve's a manufacturer. When he buys a particular good uh, and he sells it, he wants to know. Um, and you've got your gross margin percentage, which you, you have your sales, your cost of your product, and then you have your gross product, your gross profit. And that gross profit tends to vary within different industries. Could be as um, as high as 80 percent, could be as low as 20 percent in some industries. It depends on what the industry is. Um, 
and then we talked about profit as a percent of sales. We have profit per employee. How much uh, profit am I making per employee? You get into the retail market, you get profit square foot. Uh, you also have your revenue or sales growth. And one of the big ones that I use is revenue per employee. How much revenue have I have for each employee? You know, th my goal is about $100,000 revenue per employee. If I get under that, I start worrying. If I get over that too much, uh, I think the sales, the, the, the employees have to, um, I may have to hire some more employees. They're, they're being overworked. And of course, I noticed that with the overtime as well. Um, then you have accounts receivable over. People owe you money. How quickly do they pay you? Do you need to hire a collections person? You know, do you pay somebody 15 dollars to sit there and, and talk to them and try to get your receivables um, paid? Uh, days and payable. How long does it take you to pay your bills? You want your vendors happy, right? You want to pay them. You want to do, keep doing business with your vendors. Uh, if you have inventory, uh, how many days does that inventory sit there? How many times does that inventory turn over? Does it turn over five times a year? Does it turn over ten times a year? Is it stale? Do you have to go there and dust off the uh, off your inventory? You might want to sell, sell those or donate those old items. Um, customer KPIs, I'm not going to get into this uh, in too much detail, but um, complaints and resolutions, uh, customer service. When I, when I talk about customer service, what, what company comes to mind as, as a big customer service company? Anybody? Zappos? Zappos comes to mind. Uh, they, pride themselves on, um, they pride themselves on customer service. One of their key metrics is how much time they spent on customer service. Um, they broke the Genius Book of World Records. Uh, if anybody wants to look this up, look this up. Um, we'll give a free book for anybody who looks this up. And it comes back with me, all right? The email, Michael Gerber, another. What's the longest uh, phone call uh, on record? If you want to Google it, try to Google it. By the end of the thing, if anybody finds it, uh, I'll, give you the, uh, I'll give you the book. Anyway, the, the companies like Zappo take this very, very seriously. So they have um, metrics on different customer service um, requirements. And then there's internal KPIs, average cost per transaction. What does the average cost of a transaction uh, take you? On-time delivery. Uh, Federal Express built their, built their business on this metrics. Has to be there positively guaranteed over that. Um, and there's community involvement, research and development expense. Waste reduction. I had one of my clients. He took over a restaurant. He was buying 50 pounds of chicken a week. Um, he took a look at the back back kitchen. Said, "This is this is silly. We're wasting a lot of chicken." Uh, he cut it down to 30 pounds of chicken a week. Really affected his bottom line. So you want to look at your waste reduction. Um, example of learning and growth. So employee satisfaction survey. My employees are very important to me. I want to have happy employees. So I want to have happy clients. Um, so you practice what you preach. I have a company, uh, outside company, come in twice a year and do an employee satisfaction survey for my employees. So out of a scale of five, I usually get between 4.6 and 4.8. So I'm happy about that, and we have comments in the survey, and we sit down after the survey and we talk about how we can improve and how we can make things better. So what we'll get measured? Uh, and there's other metrics, average years of service, Number of cross test employee, absentees, absenteeism, uh, turnover rate. Uh, clients, customers don't like a lot of turnover rate. So you, uh, you want to keep those low. Although some turnover is good, you want to get rid of the bottom 5 or 10%, but generally you want to keep it low. So I want to uh, give you some examples of my key performance indicators um, just to get you uh, see what this is about. I like having an average hourly rate of $100 or better. Uh, time over, over total time with staff, 80% or better, we track it. If it goes down below 80%, we talk to staff people and say, what's going on? 90% uh, of the clients being A or B clients, you know, you definitely don't want the D clients, so you try to get rid of your D clients. Your C clients, you try to turn into B clients, and if you you want 100% retention of staff, A and B staff, and if they're not A and B staff, then you try to make them A and B if they can't make it, they staff, maybe they may make it. 5% error rate on no, or, or notices. When we make errors, we get notices. So we track our notices. Is it the client's fault? Is it the staff's fault? Which particular staff person? 
fault it is and we track it. And then when we see consistent errors, we try to get procedures to make them better. Uh, used by clients is one of my metrics here. Uh, working process, um, less, my pipeline of work, 60 days or less. Lockup, which is a little bit more technical, it's working process and accounts receivable of 120 less. So you can see how you can get uh, real detail with these, with these metrics. Uh, so in, in your dashboard, you need to include relative KPIs, key performance indicators for your particular industry. Uh, you need to find them. I can help you find them. I can find them. Put them together. Measure your goals. Um, so companies with financial da dashboards tend to be more profitable. They have more cash for expansion and investment. Uh, they meet their growth objectives. Uh, they offer and deliver incentives to employees if you have employees. And more importantly, it's a deal acquisition candidate. So eventually, you want to check out. You want to sell your business and enjoy your life a little bit more. So the businesses with more procedures and more policies, with more uh, key performance in have a higher sales value than a regular business that doesn't have its procedures, its policies. A business where the owner doesn't really need to be there other than to lead and not manage and do the work is going to have a higher sales multiple than a business where the owner is flipping burgers or doing whatever the owner's technical stuff that the owner is doing. So these key performance indicators will help you get there. So I want to thank you very much for your valuable time. I really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them now or later on. So thank you. Can anybody uh, figure out the Zappos hours? Ten. Okay. Ten hours, 43 minutes in Las Vegas, Nevada. Ten hours, 43 minutes. Some person on Zappo was on the phone, <laughs> 10 hours, 43 minutes. And it was after helping the customer, they just kept talking. Okay. And, and Zappo was very proud of that. Uh, I'm proud of it. <laughs>